Welcome to Coniston. We have based ourselves here in the heart of the Lake District National Park and we will be sampling some of the best roads this national park has to offer. We'll be tackling this area's famous passes and stopping off at some places of interest along the way. Joining me for the ride are my colleagues Dave and Ross, as well as Giles from Adventure Bike Rides, who will be showing us some less trodden paths, and Gary from Bridgestone, who will be giving us some pointers on tyre choice for a trip like this. The first part of our route takes us from our base in Coniston to the popular tourist hotspot of Ambleside at the north of Lake Windermere. From there we take the aptly named The Struggle, a narrow stone wall climb to join with the rest of the four passes on our route. We're here on the Kirkstone Pass. Uh, usually there'd be spectacular views behind me, but not today. The great British weather has thrown us a curveball. As they say, there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad kit. And thankfully, Bridgestone and Rucker have kitted us out with some top quality stuff. So we're gonna crack on and enjoy the adventure no matter what. Kirkstone Pass is the Lake District's highest pass open to motor traffic, connecting Ambleside with Ullswater Valley. Although the highest, Kirkstone Pass is the easiest one to ride on our route. The road is not too narrow, not too steep, and there are no tricky hairpins to negotiate. All that will change by the time we hit the Hartnut and Rhinos Passes. After Kirkstone Pass, we continue through the picturesque villages of Patterdale and Glen Ridding on the shores of Ullswater. Here is a great place to stop and take stock of just how beautiful this place is. Or even put your waterproof gear to test. We continue north until we join the A66 at the top end of the Lake District and head west. Although a busy A road, the A66 boasts views better than most. We are heading towards Keswick, but if you have time, then Castlerick Stone Circle is just a five minute diversion away. Free parking and no gift shops away. We are assured impressive views, although the weather seems to be following us around. If four and a half thousand year old stones don't float your boat, maybe the ice cream van outside will. 
We made sure to fuel up at Keswick, but unfortunately didn't have time to visit the famous pencil museum in town. From Keswick, we head back south past Durban Water towards Burrowdale and onwards to Honister Pass. Okay, we're at the top of the Honister Pass now, and very much like the last pass, when we get to the top, weather closes in. So it's raining now, and we can't really see very far. So we're gonna have a coffee, uh, sit down for a bit, and hopefully the weather will clear, and we'll carry on. So that rain, it didn't clear, did it? Um, we rode the pass, it was, it was good to ride, but we couldn't get any video of it. it there was sideways rain, rain like there's never been before. Uh, and well, we couldn't do any video. Uh, so we rode the pass, we went back to the hotel, we had a beer, and today's a new day. We're back here with the idea being that today we'll get glorious sunshine and wonderful scenes of the pass. Well, the rain has cleared, but it's quite cloudy. Um, foggy. I don't know what this is. Um, so we're gonna try it again. Um, but it's okay. This is this is what it's like. This is Lake District. Yeah, and thankfully we're well kitted out, so we're ready for it. It's very dry on the inside. Yeah, dry on the inside. That's it. Off the Kirkstone Pass. Riding Honister Pass feels like you have definitely taken a step towards the wild side of the lakes. It's mostly a single lane track, and although not too steep or tricky to ride, you need to be ready to get out of the way of bigger vehicles. Although a little off our route, we did make time during our trip to visit the Lakeland Motor Museum. Over 30,000 exhibits are wonderfully displayed in this essential destination for any two- or four-wheeled enthusiast. A particular highlight being the Campbell Bluebird exhibit featuring full-size replicas of the staggering land and water world speed record machines. Back on our route, and after Honister, we take in the impressive views on the road by Buttermere and Crummock Water. From here we rack up some miles on our journey down the west side of the lakes as we head for our final two passes. 
The moorland section between Ennerdale Bridge and Calder Bridge is the highlight of this section. As we get closer to Hardnut Pass, the road gets narrower and narrower. As we begin Hardner's famous climb, we spot an enthusiastic van driver stuck on a tight bend. A thumbs up from the driver and off we go. Hardnut Pass is legendary among bikers, and for a good reason. It's a steep, narrow and naturally track, snaking up and down the mountain, with plenty of hairpins. And the surface is not always the best. Although technical, it's hugely rewarding to ride, but it takes a lot of concentration, so best stop if you want to admire the views. Rhinos Pass is slightly less demanding than Hartnott, but it's still pretty damn far from a gentle aero. It brings us down to lowlands and seems like a perfect end to riding the passes.
With the thrilling Hardnut and Rhinos Passage complete, it's just a few more miles back to our base in Coniston. But first, Giles has something to show us. So in addition to our road ride, we have also sampled some off-road. So we've done some gravel roads and some lanes. But you can't just ride anywhere. There are legal issues around it. And luckily we have Giles here from Adventure Bike Rides who knows exactly where to go. And what's the deal, Giles? Um, well, generally, uh, it's got to be a legal byway. Uh, it's got to be open and not on a temporary road closure with the local authority. Uh, you can check with the local authority, but often their information is either not up to date or uh, there may be an issue with a, a lane quite quickly that's not been put on the database. Yeah. And another thing, obviously, is tyres. We have been doing roads and these gravel tracks, and we are all on stock tyres. But there's, well, you know very well, Gary. I do. You know, <laughs> tyres is a, a critical thing on a motorcycle, as we all know, and it's the same with anything, any choice that you make, whether you're sports bike riding or whether you're racing, it's, it's about choosing the right tyre. Um, so you don't need, if you're just going gravel riding, like, like you can see here behind us, if you're just going gravel riding, you only need an A41, like our Bridgestone A41. That's all you need. People think you need a big knobbly. Knobblies are great in the mud, of course they are, but for gravel, an A41 or something like that is absolutely fine. We spend you know, hours, days, weeks, months developing it on the tarmac, in the wet, on the gravel, so that the guys out there that want to go on an adventure on the adventure bike can. I think the message I would try to put across is that uh, please don't be put off. If you ride an adventure bike, if you put the right tyres on it to give you a little bit of a head start, don't be put off, go and have a go, because you might just realise what you're missing out exactly. on. Exactly, yeah, yeah, you've got an adventure bike, yes, so go and have an fun. adventure. Smiles, yeah. Yeah. such yeah. big yeah. smiles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. yeah it's great. Yeah. 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 We had a fantastic time riding in the Lake District, and the route that we did is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what's available around here. This is a real biker's paradise, easily reached by anyone in the UK. If you haven't ridden it yet, now is the time to do it.